Mikael, what kind of message do you think this team sent? You know, after the shots stopped falling in the second half, you guys were still resilient enough to beat a really good team on the road. Um, we came out and tried to defend our best, you know. You know, we haven't been playing that well the past couple of games, and team's been scoring at us on will, at will, but we came out, you know, we came out slow in the second half, but, you know, we're together with a team, and that's what Villanova basketball is all about. If teams making runs, you know, we say attitude, and that's what we did. You know, we kept grinding, kept competing, and, you know, we got it at the end. Uh, for both of you guys, neither one of you has ever lost back-to-back -back games since you've been in a Villanova uniform, which is pretty extraordinary. How does that happen? I mean, what is the message that goes between this team that doesn't allow that to occur, that there's never such thing as a losing streak of even two games? Uh, it's... It's how we, you know, we come back the next day and practice, you know. We don't, you know, put our heads down and get sad that we lost. We know there's a lot more games in the season. So we come back strong the next day, you know, attitude, and we get better. You know, we work even harder than the than other day. So I think that's the major thing that we come back to practice and we still getting better and better for our next game. Dante, this might be a different version of the same question. Uh, asked just now, but was did you want to send a message to Xavier today about the Big East title race? Because you guys come in here trailing in the standings right now, but obviously multi-time defending champions of this league. Did you want to send them a message about that? I think we wanted to send ourselves a message. Um, not necessarily about the title race or anything, but about playing Villanova basketball. We knew that we were winning games, that we were, we were knocking down shots, and um, we knew we weren't playing Villanova basketball. So we wanted to come in here and just send ourselves a message and get back to our culture of basketball. What is Villanova basketball? Like, how would you describe that to someone who had never watched you guys play? Um, Defending and rebounding at the highest level, um, being together when they make runs, we just like Kale said, we clap our hands, say attitude, just keep a good attitude because uh, playing against some really good players and really good teams, so we we're not going to stop them. Um, we just have to limit them, and we just have to be together as one throughout the whole 40 minutes. How does a game like today prepare you for a run in the Big East tournament, and then of course later in the NCAA tournament? We just. You just got to get back to work, you know. We went back to work after after our loss, and, you know, we came out more together, play harder than we usually do, and we just got to keep that up. You know, we can't settle. We can't relax. We got to – we can, they out-rebounded us, and they shot 56, or 46%. So we still got to, you know, keep getting better, you know, get better at coaching when coaches at us in practice getting on us. We're going to just keep, you know, getting better and try to make a run. Any other questions? My man. Oh, my man. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, oh, Joe. Didn't see you all the way back. Well, just yell. There you go, Joe. Um, That's my man, Joe. My man, Joe. Um, there were three games. You lost two of them. The threes weren't falling. How good was it to see the three falls today? And was there any ever crack in the confidence of either of you guys? I think the best thing for us today um, was not the threes falling, but um, we could look each other in the eye after the game and know we played Villanova basketball. We know we defended at a high level today. Um, like Kale said, I think they, they still beat us on the glass, um, but we're getting better. Um, and when we look ourselves in the eye at the end of the game, we know we're getting better. We're taking a step in the right direction. That was the biggest thing. Jay, what if you know any qualities does this team share with the 2016 team? Well, t today they they really showed us something. I think they showed <laughs> each other something that the um, just the, the the mental toughness and the unselfishness to come in here in, in, a, in a great environment against an outstanding team that's playing hot. And we were, you know, we're struggling a little bit. I have guys like um, Jalen Brunson come in and. Um, 
you know, get eight assists and just lead the team and, and Mikhail come in and defend. Um, Dante, get nine rebounds, nine assists. I mean, making the shots, uh, th that team had guys that would do all those little things, you know. Uh, we, we came in here one year, um, Josh Hart, we, we had injuries and Josh Hart played the five spot in a game here. No, no complaints. Um, these guys are the same. Coach, you guys, um, I think, had 10 of your three-pointers in the first half and then started the second half and missed seven straight. What kind of adjustments did Xavier make or you know, did you guys um, just you know, have open looks that you didn't feel like you could you knock down that you could have? A combination. They, 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 but they, they really extended and, and got in us. And, and uh, um, th there was one play we ran early for Dante. They, 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 they guarded him. We were trying to throw back for three. They guarded him outside the NBA three-point line. And then he still shot it. So, you know, so they did a good job, and then we made some bad decisions. But um, then at, we started doing a better job, you know, a little bit later than that. But I think it was more their their commitment to extending. You've seen Trayvon Blewett for four years now, and, you know, he had eight points in the first half and finished as the leading scorer. What <coughs> makes him so um, difficult to, to guard? You know, his ability to move – Without the basketball in transition and in their half court offense and, and his deep range, that combination, you don't see guys like old school shooters like Reggie Miller used to really move well without the ball. You don't see many guys like that. Everybody's used to having the ball in their hands. He's amazing. You know, we, yeah, we tried everything to stay with him, did a decent job in the first half, but they run him off screens. He runs the floor in transition. He comes behind the ball. And he's got a quick release and deep range. So that combination is just brutal. I hope this is the last. I told him in McCure after the game, um, I've hated every game we've played against them, and I hope it's the last time we play against them. But I have great respect for both of them. Jay, I, I asked your guys about this. Um, the fact that you guys haven't lost back-to-back -back games in such a long time, and you know they talked about Villanova basketball. But, but beyond all, <laughs> they used to be our beat writer, Villanova basketball. I'm so tired of hearing it all these years. <laughs> but they, but beyond that, I mean, what does it say about sort of the mentality of the, the people that come into this program now that 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 does not occur ever? Dana, we, we never ever talk about it ever, uh, and we won't. Um, if we would have lost today, and as long as we played the right way and played Villanova basketball, we would have been okay. We really would. So it's never anything we talk about. Every time you guys bring it up, it makes me stop. It makes us stop and think. Oh, wow, that's that's pretty amazing. But what's more amazing to us is that we 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 didn't play Villanova basketball against Providence. We we admitted it to ourselves, and Providence did a great job. And then we came in and played Villanova basketball. Um, that sounds easy, but it's hard to do. And, th and that's what we take most pride in. Jay, when it's the second half and they've come back at you and the crowd's into it, <coughs> at that point in time, what does Villanova basketball do for you? What is it that happens at that time that you can just not blink and move on? It's, it's, it's these guys. It's, it's, it's really Dante's starting to be that guy, but it, it's Mikhail, Jalen, Phil Booth, even though he's on the bench, Eric Pascal, the guys have been in these – Environments like looking at everybody, all the young guys, and saying, We say attitude to each other, like we say, We've been here, this is what we come to, to experience, this, this is what we want, and, um, and just get on to the next play. And, and uh, a coach can't do that. Like the players either do that for each other or they don't. And Mikhail and Jalen were great today on the court. Phil Booth is doing it. Dante's become, he's learning that. Eric Pascal is starting to learn it. And you, you need older guys to do that. Uh, Jay, the other night you had eight assists and 19 turnovers. Today you had 25 assists and six turnovers. What was what was the difference? 18 to 22 year olds. Like, you know, you know, you're, you're coaching young guys, and they're you know they're trying their best. We're up at Providence, and we just we just got out of our. And again, you got to give Providence credit. They they got in us. Um, same type of environment as this, and we just got out of character. We got sloppy. Um, Again, it wasn't just them. It was, it was Providence, too. Um, and and the, the difference is uh, watching film, addressing it, and changing it, the players. right? And sometimes players can look at that and say, hey, it wasn't my fault. I got fouled. These guys said, hey, it was me. You know, I can control that. And that, that's, again, that's the leadership. You know, that's what we talk about going on basketball. It's, it's the older guys 
taking the lead that they're coming into this game to pay attention to detail. Uh, speaking of Phil, I, I think they, you said that he got his cast off. So, time. What, what's next? What What do you I, hope to see? We're going to work hard to try to get him back uh, Wednesday, but it's not a guarantee. You know, he hasn't touched a basketball yet. He got it off right before we left. He didn't do anything out here. So we're going to work to try to get him back. But even if we get him Wednesday, it'll be really limited. We got to. We're going to be careful with him. Jay, I know the focus is on your team. Um, but here in Ohio, there's been a lot of happy college basketball fans between this team, between Cincinnati and a guy like Chris Holtman, who you know was at uh, Butler, now at Ohio State, doing a great thing there. As somebody who's won the national championship and understands the game of college basketball, can you give us your impressions on what's happening here in the state of Ohio in terms of the sport? I don't know if you mentioned Mick, but you got, oh, yeah. you got three guys right there, Mick, Chris, and, and, and Ohio State. You, you, you have three of the best coaches of the, three of the best in college basketball right there that, that you, you can you can see the program you know what the Cincinnati program is under Mick it's it's you know it's going to be the same they're going to play hard they're going to do what they do Chris Mack has a, a, a national championship contender every year you know and now they're, they're getting it going Ohio State looks just like Butler to me you know they play the same way so you, you've got three great coaches there each one of them I, each one of them, I think, are national championship contenders. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yep.